Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedom and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country. In the courtrooms of America, Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedom. Are we beyond diplomacy with regards to Iran's race for a nuclear weapon? I am Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me today on Faith and Freedom is Professor Ephraim Inbar. He is the director of BISA, the Begin Sadat Center for Strategic Studies in Israel. And he is an expert on Israel, Iran, and the Middle East. Joining me today is uh, Professor Inbar, and welcome to Faith and Freedom. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Now, you are have given lectures, and one that I heard recently was very compelling with regards to Iran. In America, we talk about having all the options on the table, or at least some of our politicians do. Are we beyond diplomacy at this point? Is there something that America and others ought to do now with regards to Iran in its quest for nuclear weapons? It's quite obvious that we are uh, beyond uh, diplomacy. The Iranians actually have stopped uh, talking to the West because they understand that uh, even without talking, uh, they'll have enough time to complete their nuclear program. And uh, as far as they are concerned, uh, the world is gradually moving to accepting Iran as a nuclear uh, fait accompli. And, you know, some people think, well, during the conflict that we had with Russia, MAD, the Mutually Assured Destruction, they're not going to push the button because if they do, we'll push the button and we'll all be blown up. So neither one of us ought to act. But that same mentality does not work, does it, with Iran? Uh, you are perfectly correct uh, for several reasons. Uh, Iranian uh, leadership uh, is not uh, indeed uh, rational as we, uh, we think it is. I think it, it's a leadership that is ready to take grave risks in contrast to the communist. Uh, in addition, the Iranian leadership is uh, not uh, sensitive to cost. Uh, an important element in uh, deterrence is uh, the ability to impress on the other side that uh, he will pay uh, an unbearable price for acting against your own interests. But uh, the Iranians are uh, actually signaling quite clearly that they are not sensitive to cost, that they are ready to pay in the millions for achieving uh, their uh, purposes. This makes uh, Iran a country that it's very difficult to deter. Now, from someone who's outside of the United States, and they're looking at the United States of America, and our dealings not just with this administration, but particularly with this administration under President Obama, but even before, and we talk about diplomacy, and we talk about all the options on the table, how is that being viewed now, say, for example, in Israel or by the Arab countries? Are we viewed as credible? I think the Israelis, uh, which are friends of America and uh, other Arab countries that are friends of America, and together with uh, enemies of America, don't uh, take America seriously. Uh, the Americans are seen as retreating from the Middle East, as not having the political will to fight for their interests. We've seen many events during the Arab Spring, which uh, are a clear indicator for the lack of American credibility. Mubarak was uh, deserted by mm -hmm. President Obama. Uh, Gaddafi, who after all uh, played ball uh, with the West, uh, mm -hmm. uh, gave up his weapons of mass destruction, sold oil, was removed from power. Uh, and uh, what have you got? You didn't get anything better. Uh, I think that the Saudis, for example, were furious when President Obama criticized their intervention in Bahrain in order to stabilize the regime uh, that faced uh, Iranian subversion. So basically, the Middle Eastern countries uh, look with exasperation at the uh, United States as being uh, a paper tiger. And you know, when... We talk about Iran and we talk and talk and talk and then we don't do anything on the one hand. And on the other hand, when we have allies like Hosni Mubarak in Egypt and 
Qaddafi became an ally. As you mentioned, he gave up mass weapons of mass destruction. He outlawed the Muslim Brotherhood in, in, in that as a political party. He paid reparations for some of the terrorist acts he did. He helped to strike down terrorists. Whenever then we help to topple those regimes, um, not only it seems is on the one hand when we don't say – when we don't do what we say with regards to Iran, but also when we don't support our allies – and we actually help them to be toppled, it seems as though that there would not only be a, um, a mistrust but also a disbelief that we're not credible and our word can't be taken seriously. Yeah, I think that there is a clear fear that the Iranians uh, eventually get the bomb. Many countries will prefer to get close to Iran mm -hmm. rather than to rely on an unreliable United States. Uh, the small countries uh, in the Gulf are very close to Iran. And they are not sure that the Americans will help them uh, in face of uh, uh, Iranian uh, aggression. You know, it's uh, one statement that you mentioned to me when we were talking about the elections and so forth and we were talking about the presidential election in the United States. Uh, one of the statements that you had made is that Israel is interested not as much as the president – with the regards to Israel, but that the president of the United States be a strong president and that America be strong. Because for Israel, obviously you need an ally and we need an ally as well, but you need a strong ally. You can't have a good ally if they're not going to be strong. You need America to be a strong presence, a world leader. And that struck me in a unique way that I had not thought about that before. There is no alternative to a strong America to uh, maintain the safety of the current democracies. I'm not even talking about expanding the world of democracies. I'm talking about the present democracies being able to survive an Islamist uh, authoritarian challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, those countries that are not democratic but are allies of America will simply have to give up their American alliance, if they see that is an America that is not willing to uh, help them in case of need. So if Iran becomes nuclear, not only does it put Israel and the rest of the Middle East in jeopardy, but also the United States of America and other Middle Eastern countries that otherwise would not be in favor of Iran becoming nuclear would probably gravitate towards them because they wouldn't want to be hurt rather than gravitating towards the United States because at this stage they can't trust the United States to maintain that ally relationship in the tough times. Yes, and they may go nuclear because they are not going to accept a, an American nuclear umbrella which is not credible. And having a, a Middle East in which there are several countries uh, with nuclear weapons, uh, apart from uh, Iran, we may see uh, Turkey going nuclear. We may see Egypt going nuclear. We may see Saudi Arabia. It will be a strategic nightmare for everybody. It will create many destabilizing situations, which would, could be very costly. We shouldn't forget that, after all, much of the energy of the world comes from this region. And if this region is contaminated by uh, nuclear uh, uh, fallout, uh, it could be a terrible economic crisis for the whole world. Mm. Well, and we know from Ahmadinejad's speeches at the United Nations and elsewhere, uh, he views essentially this nuclear holocaust as uh, in a messianic term. So for him, uh, there is no uh, mutually assured destruction. There is no deterrent for him to not go nuclear. Uh, they, if they got a nuclear weapon, there's no question that they would use that. I think they uh, said it openly. They, it's, they are not ashamed to say that they want to destroy the Jewish state. Mm -hmm. They are not ashamed to say that they want to remove Israel from the map. And unfortunately, the world is uh, doing nothing about it. We have only one country in the world that has uh, severed its diplomatic relations with Iran because of its statement. It's Canada. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the rest of the world, the rest of the free world, does not emulate the Canadian uh, moral behavior. Well, our guest is uh, Professor Dr. Ephraim Inbar. He is director of the Begin Sadat Center for Strategic Studies in Jerusalem, Israel. 
And uh, we're talking about Iran. We're going to be talking about some of these issues more on faith and freedom. Go to our website at Liberty Council's website. That's libertycouncil.com, our new website. It connects all of our other resources together. You can also go to lc.org and uh, look at various different kinds of resources that are available for you. You can sign up for our Liberty Alert. You can also order the book Resurgent by Ken Blackwell. And it's about restoring a constitutional America again. Go to lc.org. You can also, if you want to go to Israel, you've never been, or if you have been, I encourage you to go with us in May of 2012. You can find more information about the trip in Israel on the website. Go to lc.org. You have been listening to Faith and Freedom with Liberty Council. We hope that we have motivated you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedom. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email updates. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.